Fellowship. I'm Pastor Coach Anthony McKissick Sr., and I am excited that you decide to spend these few five minutes of fellowship with us. This is the Bible study session over anxiety, and I'm so glad that you're here because if you are anything like me, over the course of this pandemic, over the course of the last few years, you have either faced anxiety head on or you know someone else who's struggling with it right now. So what I would like to do is get a biblical standpoint on anxiety because I want you to be free of that. I want to be free of it. I can't say that I'm 100% free, but that's the transparency in me as your pastor. Once again, I'm excited. I am blessed that you tuned in, logged in, clicked in, scrolled in. However you got here, that's not important. What's important is that you are here. So I thank God for you. I pray for you, but let us pray together right now. If you can bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord Jesus, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this opportunity of preaching and teaching. 
Thank you for this Bible enrichment. Thank you for pouring into my heart. I would ask that you would remove any distraction, remove any technological difficulty that may come and hinder your word from going across. Remove me if I am the issue. Allow you to raise up in me as I decrease. Let your word be spoken. Give me the endurance. Give me the strength. Give me the fortitude to speak your word in a manner that it can be understood and comprehended by your people. Lord, you called me for this moment. In your mighty name we pray, amen. So once again, we are talking about anxiety. And for those who don't know, anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness, unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. He is left out or he, he felt anxious about something. Perfect example, I have a big game coming up against a top-ranked team in the state. And it's tomorrow, as a matter of fact, and they're in our region. So the game counts because it's in our region. We haven't been playing at our best. We've been winning, but we haven't been playing at our best. So I, you know, I start worrying about what happens if. What happens if, if we don't win? What happens if my players don't play well? What happens if the team is just that much better than us? That is anxiety. Or you're worried about something that's going to happen in the future, but there's no guarantee that it's gonna happen. Anxiety, that's a problem. But Matthew 6, Matthew 6, verse 34. Matthew 6, verse 34 says, Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Sufficient for today is its own trouble. So don't worry about tomorrow. I got a game tomorrow. How can you tell me not to worry about tomorrow? It is what it is. If I worry about today, tomorrow will take care of itself. Today I'm going to give you five, five reasons not to be anxious. Five reasons not to be anxious. And they're coming from Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34. I'm going to read out the ESV, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34 out the ESV. Reason number one, do not be anxious because that was a comma, not a period. That was a comma, not a period. Verse 25 says, therefore, I tell you, don't be anxious about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is life not more than food? For the body, and the body more than clothing, once again I repeat, do, be, do not be anxious about your life. What will you eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on? Is life not, is not life more than food, and the body not more than clothing? So what this is really telling us, what you are worried about is a comma. It's, it's not the end of a thing. It's a comma, not a period. So instead of worrying about my health, per se, I'm worried about what I'm going to put on my body more than what I'm putting in my body. We have to be more cautious about the things we worry about. What you are anxious about, what's bothering you today, Will it even affect you 10 years from now? The situation ship that you're in and they decide they don't want to be with you no more? Like, how many of y'all married? Yeah, might be a little issue. But you're a teenager, you're in high school, you're uh, young and, and you have 10 job offers or, or you're a very valuable person and they tell you they don't want to be with you. Well, I mean, move on. Don't allow a small issue to become a large issue. Don't allow something about what you're putting on your body to drain down your body. Food, oh, am I gonna eat fried or baked shrimp? Not am I gonna eat it all? Where am I gonna eat it? Am I gonna go to Red Lobster? Am I gonna go to Papa Do's? Sometimes we make this thing too big. Reason number one not to be anxious is because that was a comma, not a period. Reason number two, not to be anxious, is because you're worth it. Believe it or not, you are worth it. Reason number two, you are worth it. 
sometimes we fail to know that we're worth it. Verse 26 says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Like really, the birds flying around are not worried. The bees are not worried. They're not out here sowing and reaping and working and doing this, but God's taking care of them. They don't go to a nine to five. They don't, you know, have to worry about this, that, and the other. And the problem is that we don't even find, find value in ourselves sometimes. What I mean by that is that we don't understand how, how valuable we are to the kingdom, how valuable we are to our family, how valuable we are to our community and the people around us. And when we don't find value in ourselves, we assume that others can't find value in us either. That is not true. First reason not to be anxious, that was a comma, not a period. Second reason, because you're worth it. Third reason, it's a wasted move. Say that it was a wasted movement. It means that you're doing things that you don't even have to do. When I talk about, uh, you know, to my team about the movements that they make on a basketball court, and I tell them that, let's say there's seven steps from point A to B, and the, the, the quickest route to there is to go there. But when they make a movement here, then they stutter step, take a step here. Those are wasted movements. When you are being anxious in life, you are wasting your time, you're wasting your movements. Verse 27 says, and which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour of his, his span? Which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? None of y'all. So even, let's say, oh, if my time is tomorrow, me worrying about it ain't going to make tomorrow come any less quicker. It, like, it's coming whether I like it or not. So you worrying about an issue. If the issue's coming, it's coming. I, I, I'm working on my anxiety. And I had to say, you know what? If they got a problem with me, then they just going to have to have a problem. Like, let's do whatever we got to do. We're going to meet it up. We're going to... If you, gonna, if you think you're going to fire me, then fire me. If you think you're my source, we, we're going to find out real quick that you're not. But I can't put too much energy and effort into trying to stop the inevitable. Something that if you have your mind made up about me and my productivity, if you have your mind made up about me in your mind, then I'm not going to waste movements worrying about changing. changing. I'm not going to waste movements worried about changing your mind. Verse 28 says, and why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And Solomon was a bad man. Solomon was like he was draped out, dripped out, whatever, flossing, whatever you want to call it, and, and whatever culture that you're in, Solomon was wise and Solomon was the man. And it says not even he looked as good as the lilies and the flowers and, and like none of that. He didn't even have, so pretty much what the Bible saying is you ain't no Solomon and you worried about clothes so no matter what you do you're not going to be as fresh as Solomon was. So why are you even worried about that? Stop being anxious. The number one reason is because that was a comma not a period. Number two, you are worth it whether you know it or not. You are worth it. Number three, it was wasted movement. And the fourth reason that you should not be anxious is that it shows a lack of faith. Every time that you're anxious and you go into a spirit of anxiety, you are telling your father, you're telling God that I don't trust you. I don't trust you with my life. I don't trust the plan that you've put over my life. I don't trust that if I find myself in a situation that you won't get me out. One of the things I say most is that God will provide. The bill is due, God provide. Uh, you know, income, my, my bank account going to negative, God will provide. A bill pops up, God will provide. Wheels go flat, God. And every time that we speak it, that we decree it, and we declare it, it happens. Because God will provide, and he does provide. Verse 30 says, 
But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothes you? Oh, you of little faith. Oh, that hits me there. When he says, oh, you of little faith. It's almost like saying, you little, you, you smidget. Your mental, you, you mental midget. You have no faith. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall I eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, but your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. So if this is my Father, and I claim to be the Son of God, if I claim to be a Christian, if I claim that he loves me and I love him too, then why don't I trust him? Because my faith is small. I'm a parent, got a wife, and as a mother, one thing mothers don't like is when the kids come home and say, you know, I, whenever they say something that the mother's supposed to do, like feed them, and they go somewhere else and act like they're hungry, oh, they might as well spit in their mama's face. Because what you're not going to do is go out there in the community, go out there to your friends and them, and act like you ain't getting food at all, like I'm not doing my job. So as a mother, and you feel that way, how do you think God feels your father when you put on like you don't trust his plan, when you're so worried and you're so anxious because you don't know how it's going to work out? He might be upset with you, so you might want to watch it. Being anxious shows a lack of faith. And my final, my next point is that you have to practice kingdom prioritization. That comes from verse 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Stop chasing stuff and start chasing God. When you chase God, that stuff will start chasing you. When you have kingdom priorities, when my priorities are lined up with Christ, when the first thing I do in the morning is seek Christ, what do you want out of me today? Then I'm really not even worried about what I'm worried about because now I'm worried about what he's worried about. If he tells me, uh, Anthony, I want you to make sure that you pray for this young man today. Make sure that you pray for this young lady. Make sure that you give this. Make sure that you reach out to I can't. I can't worry and pray. I can, but it'd be dumb. But if I'm so focused on what God has me to do, then I ain't got time to be worried all the time. What, what I'm worried for? I have to have kingdom prioritization. Point number one, don't be anxious because it was a comma, not a period. Number two, you're worth it. Number three, it's wasted movement. Number four, it shows a lack of faith. Number five, you need to practice kingdom prioritization. And my last and final point is that you don't need to be anxious because tomorrow will take care of itself. Verse number 34 says, Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. What that means is that it's so much waiting on the other side of 12 o'clock, midnight, that what you need to do is focus on today. Because if I put my energy of today and focus it on tomorrow, I'm going to be robbed of today. And you do not want to be robbed of the blessing of today because tomorrow is not promised. So the worst thing you can do is waste today, focus it on tomorrow, and tomorrow will never come. Being anxious is a horrible thing because it robs you. It makes you pay a down payment on something that you may never possess. You're paying a down payment on a job you'll never have. You're paying a down payment on a car you never ride in. You're paying a down payment on a house you'll never get to sleep in. Stop paying down payments on things you'll never own. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the moment. Thank you for this enrichment. Thank you for casting out the spirit of anxiety. Allow us to grow. Allow us to grow closer to you. Allow us to hear you when you speak. Allow us to prioritize, have more faith, see past that comma. Jesus, be with us. Allow us to understand that what we're worried about today may be gone tomorrow. So we can just let it go. 
Lord Jesus, I thank you for allowing me to be your humble servant. Thank you for using me. And I pray that this message doesn't land on deaf ears. In your mighty name we pray, amen. Thank you for spending this time with us. If it was too long for you, I did what God told me to do. Share this message, share the points, visit our website. I hope to hear from you soon. God loves you. So do I. I'm out.